Hello and welcome to Shipwreck Sean's On The Menu. This week, we are doing drinks based on Shakespeare, the Bard, one of the greatest writers in the English language. If you've ever been to a play, you've probably seen something of Shakespeare's. If you've ingested any media in the English language, you have heard something that is a reference to Shakespeare, to be or not to be. That is the question that we are here to answer today. I guess more it's a to drink or not to drink. But anyway, we have three really cool drinks today that are based on the works of Shakespeare. We have one from Macbeth, we have one from Henry V, and we have one from Hamlet. So, all the world is a bar and we are but poor patrons. Let's make some drinks. So, Macbeth is one of my favorite plays. The, excuse me, the Scottish play. We, we can't say its name. Ah, is one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. And kind of one of my favorite images is always Lady Macbeth rubbing her hands, trying to get the blood out, no matter how far down in the play we are from the murder of Duncan. So I thought, well, let's turn that image, that damned spot, as she calls it, into a drink. And this uh, idea came to me. They have a little set of um, cocktail picks that are swords from Toledo. So I was like, yes, let's, let's work with that. And then the key is uh, we're going to make a simple sour, and then we're going to top it with cherries that are dripping in uh, their syrup so that it kind of cascades into the drink um, when you get it, and then you can eventually swirl it to try to get the spot out, as it were. All right, so this has maraschino cherries. Get, get the good ones, get the Luxardo cherries. Um, we've got lemon juice. We've got maraschino liqueur, which is, again, a cherry liqueur, but it doesn't taste like what you think cherries taste like. It's, they're maraschino cherries. We have gin and some simple syrup. Again, always make your simple syrup at home. Always squeeze your citrus fresh. I squeezed this before we started shooting. All right, so let's go ahead and make this drink. So we're going to start with uh, one ounce of gin, and the gin helps give it like a nice, um, solid herbal base. I tried this originally with vodka, and it wasn't as good. Uh, I used a citron. It's eh, but gin is what you need. Then we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of maraschino liqueur. There's no real other alternate for this. It's uh, Italian. Uh, like cherry pits. It's really good. It's dry though, and it can be an acquired taste. So just be aware when you try, when you first get it. Then we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of our lemon, and then half an ounce of simple. Do because otherwise this would be a bracingly dry drink and we need the simple syrup to just lighten it a little and kind of round it out because while eventually the cherries will bring some sweetness to it they're not going to bring it immediately and not in the way that we want all right so before i shake this i'm going to prep my garnish so first off we need three cherries let me grab a spoon what i'm going to do is i'm going to spoon out three cherries, just kind of put them in the lid here. Uh, this can be a messy garnish to make. So be aware of that before you make this drink. You, as the bartender, it will get a little sticky. All right. Then we are going to spear our cherries. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit of that cherry juice in here. That's too much. Out some. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I'm prepping this drink, I'm going to store my cherries there so that I can serve them and they'll be uh, dripping. And now I am covered in cherry juice. All right. Now let's shake. Ice in the tin. Always close your pineapple. Oh, 
Also, when you're choosing your glassware for this drink, you want something that's kind of uh, tall and thin because it needs to be able to fit the cherries over top. So whatever, size it to whatever kind of pick you're using to hold your cherries. Then we strain. So this is not a big drink. And then we top. And there you have a damned spot. As you see, you get that nice kind of dripping from the cherries as they're causing the blood to flow. And then, so let's try it first without adding too much cherry. You get the gin, you get the maraschino. Those are your key flavors. Your syrup and your lemon juice are kind of moderating them. And they're good. It's, it's a very refreshing drink. And now let's go ahead and let's stir. And then as you kind of sip this, you'll see that the uh, maraschino cherries, the brandy cherries, start to come through. And you get this much sweeter flavor. So this drink kind of evolves as you sip on it. So there you have a damned spot. Hmm. Wonderful little drink. Henry V has one of my favorite speeches in all of Shakespeare. And if you hear any part of it, you know it immediately. It's the St. Crispian's Day speech. It's the Band of Brothers speech. Um, if you really want a great version of it, uh, go, once you're done with this video, or pause this video, Look up Kenneth Branagh's 1989 film version. You'll find this speech on YouTube. It's brilliant. I love it. It never fails to get me pumped. So what I thought I would do is I would make a drink that is both, you could make just one serving of it or you could make it as a punch because we few, we happy few, we band of brothers. So I looked up when St. Crispin's Day is. It's in October, which is when the, Battle of Argincourt was fought, which is what Henry V is based on, you know, as much as any of Shakespeare's histories are based on history. So I know I wanted fall flavors for this uh, drink. And it's a little large if you're going to drink it by yourself, but if you want to uh, rise all of the um, volumes of what I give you here, you can to make a punch. So just Pick your apple juice, however much, or your apple cider, however much you've got, and then do the math around all of these. But I'm going to, for this, make a single serving because uh, I don't feel like making the whole punch. This is great, though, like served in a crock pot. So what do we have? First off, we've got apple cider. Um, I fresh pressed this, but you can get it at the grocery store. It'll be fine. And for anyone who is across the pond, cloudy apple juice is what you're looking for. Then we're going to use Applejack as our base spirit. Get the bottled and bond 100, uh, 50 proof, 100% apple, Applejack. This is a great spirit. And if you're not familiar with Applejack, go and buy yourself a bottle. It is wonderful. You'll find it over in the brandies because it's technically an apple brandy. Then we've got apricot liqueur to help give us a little more round sweetness. We've got ginger. We have allspice dram. Uh, again, that's fall in a glass. Um, anytime you're like, what should I put with apple? Allspice dram. If you're making a tiki drink, allspice dram. What I'm saying is if you don't have a bottle of allspice dram, and St. Elizabeth, Elizabeth's is the easiest brand to find, if you don't have a bottle of this, get a bottle of this, put it in your bar. You will. Use it. It lasts a while because you use very little at a time. It's very potent. It is one of my favorite ingredients in spirits. You'll see it come up a lot. Then we've got some lemon juice, some Angostura bitters, and some simple syrup. So let's start making this, shall we? All right. So we're going to start out with two ounces of our apple cider. And again, I was extra and I fresh made this, but you can just buy it at the store. It's all, it's all good. 
Just don't get apple juice. Make sure you have cider. Then we're going to do an ounce and a half of our apple jack. Because we are appling this up. Right. Next, we have an ounce of apricot. And try to find a decent apricot liqueur. Next, you're going to need a uh, ginger liqueur. We're again going to put in one ounce. This is going to help tamp some of the sweetness and give this drink a little bit of that fall bite that we're looking for. I'm using Barrow's Intense Ginger, which is really good. You could also use um, Canton. Dom, the, it's French. It comes in the bottle that kind of looks like uh, a lantern. I'll put the name there in the corner. That one's really easy to find. Then we're going to do half an ounce of allspice dram, half an ounce of our lemon juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, and last but not least, we're going to do two dashes of Angostura bitters. Or four if you're using a cool Jap Japanese dasher bottle. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add ice to our shaker. And again, this drink has a large volume, so kind of be careful. And you don't need to put too much ice in your shaker. We're going to serve the single serving of this over ice. Give it a good shake. And then in a medium-sized kind of Collins glass, we're going to go ahead and put a little more fresh ice, which we're going to throw across the bar. Again, always close your pineapple. And we're just going to strain this in. Grab a straw. And there you have a wee few, we happy few. Mm. you're immediately, you get hit with apple and apricot, and it's all kind of modulated and moderated by the ginger, by the allspice, by the lemon. This tastes like fall. It's fall in a, it's just, it's so good. It's just fall in a glass. It's simple. It evolves as it moves through your palate. Mm. I could drink this just, just sit here and sip on this. It's so, so good. And if you had this in a crock pot and it was hot, or even just a punch bowl with ice and you were serving it, it would also be stellar. So there we have a we happy few. Alas, Horatio, I knew him for your. He was a man of infinite jest and most excellent fancy. Oh, hello. So, <laughs> um, I wanted to make a drink about Hamlet. And as I was thinking about it more and more, I was like, well, we could do something from to be or not to be or something with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. And more and more, I kept coming back to that little bit where he's looking at the skull. And then I remembered they make glassware that look like skulls. So I decided we are going to make a poor Yorick. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing you're gonna need to do, is we're gonna need to crush some ice because a poor Yorick is a tiki drink. It's a Mai Tai riff, but I wanted to really shake it up. So here's what's in a poor Yorick. We've got uh, coconut rum. Do not use Malibu period. It tastes like suntan lotion. Get a good coconut rum. I recommend uh, Coconut Cartel. They make rum. They deproof it with coconut water. It's delicious. Um, Shasta Key makes a good coconut rum too. Just get something that's kind of dark and has a high ABV. Uh, dry curacao. A um, passion fruit liqueur. Lime juice. And those are your things that you would have in a Mai Tai, where this is replacing the uh, Orjab. And then what we're going to do is we're going to top this with a drizzle of 
sorrel. And if you don't know what sorrel is, it's a Caribbean fruit. Um, you see it in uh, what they call red drink. And that's basically what this tastes like, only it's a liqueur. It is really good. So first, we're going to need crushed ice because this drink um, involves a lot of crushed ice. So go ahead and get your Lewis bag out or any other kind of ice crushing uh, device. You can start with nugget ice, but you're going to need a more fine crush for the topping because you're going to need um, shaved ice. That should be good. All right. Again, this is a great way to get your aggression out. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, pound this ice twice. So first, we're going to get some ice that we're going to put in our tin to shake with because we're going to do a dirty dump here at the end. But we need finely crushed ice. as our topper kind of like um how a mint julep you put more ice on top of it all right so then set your ice aside so let's go ahead and get our shaker and let's get to building we're going to start with two ounces of our coconut rum then we're going to need half an ounce of our dry curacao this is less a major flavor and more kind of it's a moderator around you'll find anything that you use a small amount of is probably there to just kind of help tamp down sweet or kind of bring things out here we've got uh we're gonna need three quarters of an ounce of our pineapple syrup or our passion fruit syrup i'm using uh liber co they again make really really good products i recommend them and they're not that expensive then we're going to need three quarters of an ounce of our lemon juice, lime juice, it's lime juice. One of these days, I'm going to not mix up my L's and my L's. All right, so we're gonna put that, pour, we're gonna give this a shake. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fun little skull here, and we're just gonna give that a dirty dump. And then we're gonna come in and we're going to top our skull with all that shaved ice we had. Kind of get it full. You can have it come up a little over, almost like kind of an exposed brain. Then we're gonna take our sorrel. We need half an ounce. And then we're just going to kind of drizzle that along the top. And you'll see that it's kind of cascading down through the drink. And then we just need a straw. And there you have a poor Yorick. Hmm. Immediately, you're hit with coconut and lime and then the passion fruit kind of comes in on the back and as the drink develops the sorrel comes through and it's a very distinct flavor it's hard to describe sorrel tastes like sorrel um it's kind of sweet it's a little punchy it's really good so this drink just kind of evolves as you uh sip on it so alas horatio i knew him horatio i knew him i can speak so this is the part of the episode where I bring my wife Elizabeth down and uh, she tries the drinks. So first, hon, we're going to start here with a damned spot. So I'm going to set this up for you. Uh, this out, out, damned spot, out. Ooh. That's aesthetic. I know, right? Wouldn't you be really wowed if you had a drink that was served to you dripping like that at a bar? That's nice. Okay. All right. So give her a whirl. Try it first uh, without the cherries, and then you can put the cherries in. Yeah, like I'm gonna make a mess if I try it without the cherries. Really tart, fresh, um, refreshing. It's nice. You get—is uh, it lemon juice? There's lemon juice in there. Yeah. Um, 
I'm getting it gin. Gin. Yep. Um, a little herbal. That's from the maraschino. Mm-hmm. And just wash your hands of the murder. That's good. Now it's fruitier. Once you said maraschino, now I can chase, taste the maraschino more. It does that, that drying thing that yeah. maraschino does, which is nice. It's nice. Thank you. <sighs> All right. Next, we have a We Happy Few. Okay. I feel like I should get a glass of water. <laughs> You're fine. Sweeter. Um, that tastes like apple. Yeah. And fall, and it's got um, some cinnamon. There's allspice in there. In it, yep. It's nice, very drinkable, very like. I would want to have it around Thanksgiving. Yeah. Now, if I gave you this warm instead of cold over ice, it would still be good. I bet it would. Yeah. So it's you can do it by yourself or as a punch. And then finally, we have a poor Yorick. I mean, first of all, the glass. Is just... I know. Very tiki. Um, I get orange. There's some a little um, curacao in there, yeah. I get um, rum, of course. A uh, little burnt molasses, sugary. You're probably you're getting the coconut from the coconut rum, I think. Oh yeah! Once you said coconut, I can taste the coconut too. Um, it's nice. It's not. Sometimes coconut can be really overpowering. This isn't really overpowering. Is there pineapple juice in this? Passion fruit. Passion fruit. Oh, yep. It's nice. You want to drink it by the um, pool. Yeah. All right. So which one are you going to take with you? I think I'm into this right now. All right. Well, there you go. That is our episode. Uh, come back next week when we are going to do the games of Remedy Entertainment. So Max Payne, Alan Wake, and Control. See you then. Peace.